Welcome to Conversations with Wendy D. Uh, this is a brand new series that we are starting and we are going to be talking to photographers. Yay! Uh, I want to talk to them about who they are, what they're doing, why they do it, all kinds of questions. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this uh, new series. The very first person we are talking to is my good friend John Watson. Hello. <laughs> and John and I went to college together a very long time ago. So it's great that John is joining us and he's the very first person in this interview. Yay! <laughs> Hi, John. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good, good. Uh, so the very first question right. is to ask you what you do. I am primarily a commercial photographer, um, advertising and promotion, food and hospitality, event coverage, uh, providing photography services to clients that need imagery for a variety of uses. That's the best way I can put it. <laughs> I hate that question. I know, especially <laughs> these days because um, everybody is like, what's your specialty, what's your niche, etc. But you and I come from a time that sounds bad, um, <laughs> where you learn the skills um, so that people who needed photography done could come to a skilled person and and get the imagery that they needed. And especially in a market where we were from the from where we're from the East Coast, where there was not the um, uh, population density of photographers, shall we say, um, you, ha you had to be versatile. And I mean, although there are a lot of versatile photographers out there today, um, there are also, because everything has become so specialized in niches, niched, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. um, you know, oh, I'm a food photographer, I'm a headshot photographer, I'm a, I'm a event photographer, et cetera, where I'm, I love the challenge of all photography, and so I, uh, I, I, I kind of do it all. Sometimes people say to my own detriment. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 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 a really hard question when when people want you to name your niche mm -hmm. because, as you said, we we don't do that. I like doing all kinds of photography. Exactly. I don't want to do just one kind of photography. That's why we do what we do. Exactly. I think, and also too, I say I hear it a lot where people who are one type of photography, they tend, I don't say get burned out, but it gets uh, mechanical, you know, I'll say quickly, uh, which could be years. I mean, you know, yeah. time is relative um, because it is the same all the time. And one of the things that I love about being a photographer and, and you know, how I've always done my thing is that it changes all the time. So, um, you know, this month I'm photographing plates and knives and forks and pots for a event supply rental company. And then the next week I'm photographing, traveling with musician friends from Australia. The next week I'm doing cool portraits of, of musicians or, or actors or creative people. And it, it changes all the time. So it's always, it's always fresh. So, cause lighting skills and photo skills are, are, um, they're the same all the time. I agree, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Go figure. We went to school together, so exactly. we, we have the same philosophy of photography. Yep. Um, and the same amount of experience. Like that's another big change, I think, especially these days, yeah. um, where it 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 is it is uh, it, it is so available to people now. Like. Um, Everybody has a phone that is that do that do amazing things like you know I mean you can record whole like literally feature movies on an iPhone yeah and that's awesome but at the same time <laughs> um, so let me ask you this way when we were in college mm -hmm. and we were shooting film how much of a difference like do you see a huge difference in the industry as far as people still need to have images but. But do you see a huge difference in the industry on how you work with your clients? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, like again, one of the great things is, is uh, with the technology that's out there, is that we can be, we can shoot uh, remotely from the client, um, or uh, either from the client, or um, in the case of some gallery shoots and things like that, where there's multiple 
um, being departments or whatever that need to, you know, to sort of see, see and get approval on the photos that are being produced. Some can be in New York, some can be in the room, some can be down the street, uh, but with the technology that's there, everybody is present at the time of the shoot. Um, or again, uh, if, it's, if it's a smaller um, uh, shoot, I can be shooting in my studio, shoot things, and almost instantaneously, again, can go to the client and they can go, yep, love that, and, and it's, it's done. So, and also with um, overlays on uh, uh, like packaging artwork and things like that, we, we can see it and, and as we shoot it, put it right into the, into the mock-up or the layout and, and see how it's working, see what, what changes need to be made and things like that. So, it, yeah, I mean, technology is amazing in that, in that realm compared to film. Um, with film, as you know, even with rush, rush processing on transparent, I mean, you dropped it off and, you know, I mean, remember the days when we were working together and uh, people would be complaining because, uh, you know, it's going to take an hour. <laughs> so, I mean, at one hour photo labs and things like that, even, or, or slide processing, um, that was huge, like, you know, so, and, and that, you know, that came, you know, how far into things were we? So before my, that even came out. My so. question though too is, do you find a difference now because you're, you're with your client and they can see it right away, does that affect your creativity at all? Um, yes, I think it definitely does. Uh, it, and it affects it in a way that is, um, you know, you see things on the, on, again, on the fly. So um, as you're shooting and you can see it, you can uh, you can adjust things, make changes, uh, collaborate with the people on on how how a particular look. Like you, we may start out all on the same page where we want it. We want to do this. You set it up and you do it. And then as we get into it, um, you can see that it's it's changing and uh, or that it needs to be changed. Where. Um, it allows you to be much more creative because it uh, it's so fluid. Like it's so fluid. Like that's one of the main things um, is that you can go for, you can very quickly um, go for a completely different look on things um, on the fly. Yeah, like that's that's what I love about it. Yeah, I, I mean that's one of the main things I love about the digital technology that's out there. And it's so interesting. I find that. The, the younger photographers are totally into film. Yep, yep, I know, it's funny. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I love film too, yep. but I love the digital, the ability to see things right away and look on the back of the camera. And, yep. But, you know, as I've been doing it, I just did a series on using film yep. to better understand the process. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know if you feel the same way, that because I learned on film, going digital was easier. Yes, definitely. Definitely, and uh, because it also, it, I think it, it um, imprinted some base knowledge or base skills yeah. that can kind of get lost in the technology, like where we are today, because again, somebody can just pick up a camera and, you know, click, point it at something and, and yeah. oh yeah, that looks good, but... Yeah does it because <laughs> you know a lot of times we're looking at a screen that's like this big yeah. um, or um, they don't know like they, they haven't they haven't developed the skills uh, to know what they want to change or, or, or how to change it um, because it is so like I see a lot um, and again I'm not knocking it but I see a lot where because uh, like like high ISO um, capabilities nowadays like back in the film days i mean <laughs> god i gotta shoot 400 uh, okay I, my know, favorite okay. film was 3200 yeah exactly so yeah. but you, it had that inherent quality but now um you can you can set your camera like you know at 3264 100 iso and it's brilliant i yeah. mean it's it's yeah. it's almost grainless yeah Film term there. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, so. I'm very happy that I learned on film, and I, I and I think it's important for photographers who are trying to find their way. If they hadn't learned on film, that. Mm -hmm 
to to do some film photography. Most definitely. Like Most definitely. Film. And I think that really it, it also gets into um, your you you because the 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 technology is so good in the high ISO range and things like that it's it's so much easier to shoot available light no matter where you are like in this room for example um, you can e very easily shoot very like beautiful photos beautifully lit photos based on uh, the fact that you don't need to light anything um, so is that diminishing the uh, the learning about light because it's so natural looking to us um, but it, it doesn't uh, because even even in any given room the light quality of moving closer to the window shooting through a diffused curtain um, you know things like that uh, is does that does that not get embedded like it did you know with, with the film thing because yeah. you had to get it right <laughs> you had to get it right. And, and once you, it's on the you, film, that's where it is. That's where it is. And you couldn't see it. I mean, no. there was the land of Polaroids and things yes. like that, but you couldn't see it. You yeah. had to you had to visually look at the scene and yeah. go, okay, I've metered it. I know my lights or, or, or my lighting, my light sources, like everything yeah. is where it's supposed to be. But you didn't know, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. which yeah. is that I mean, in your in your video with uh, developing the film and, it's, and that, I mean, it's, and it's kind of one of the things that I miss is that there is that moment of anticipation when you pull the cap off of that, uh, you know, that development tank or or you're going to pick up your slides or whatever it is. There's that moment of anticipation of. Did it work? Does it look as good as I think it did? Does it look better than I think it do? And yeah. all that, like, you know, so yeah. there is, you know, we did lose that in the technology. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I know. agree. Like that anticipation is great. Yeah. Still, I like my digital. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Because it's, they're tools, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, That's what I was, I was explaining that to somebody the other day. There's, there's medium format. There's 35 millimeter. There's black and white. There's color. There's digital. There's... There's like large format. A large format. There's old processes. It's they're all just tools yep. to create what's in your head and and make it happen. Yeah. So I want to talk about uh, ask you about you, the name of your company. What what's the name of your company? My company name is officially is Image Maker Photographic Studio. Short form is just Image Maker, but. And and so, why why did you choose that name? Um. Because that's that's what I was. Um, I, you know, I it was not like there's the there's the um, the sliding scale of being between being a picture taker, uh, which is 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 capturing what you see, and there's people who are amazing at that. Mm -hmm. There's people amazing at like a lot of uh, landscape art, like landscape photographers and things like that. Um, it's it's having that. I guess there's technical skill, but it's it's that seeing. This is what I see. How can I capture it? at its prime, at, at, so it looks its best. Where being a commercial photographer, which I'd always been interested in, um, is is the fact that we have to, it's like the, in the film or television, you have to create that image. Like you have to build it, you have to light it, you, you have to prop it, you have to style it. Um, so it's building an image, it's not capturing what you see. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, totally. So yeah. And, and have you had that name since, like, I know, it's yeah, many, since, many years since, since college? Yeah, pretty much I came, I came up with that name, uh, I think, about two years after college. Wow. So, uh, over 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's scary when I you know, think right? about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, why why photography? I... I bought my first camera with my own money when I was eight years old. Wow. Yeah, and funny enough, it was when um, we were on holidays in PEI, in Prince Edward Island, because um, I, I was born in Ontario and we lived there. And I think, I don't know, I, it was just, it, it was neat. I mean, that's, that's basically what it boils down to, is it was neat, because again, it was back in the day where that was not as, everywhere as it is now it's not as prevalent i mean very few people even owned cameras um and 
again, they were, there was that, they, they, and that was the day there weren't even labs that you could go and drop things at. You had to send it somewhere, so it would be weeks. And then, you know, so we're out on holidays, we're walking around, and there's this little box, and you can do this, and and then you get it back, and it's like, that's cool. Like this is where we were, or this is that, you know, that beautiful horse I saw. And I just, I just thought it was amazing. Um, that that you one was able to do that. That's then that's basically it. So when when we started on our holiday, when I was eight, um, it was in Kmart. If you remember Kmart yes. back in the day, <laughs> um, on University <laughs> Avenue, and they had a. It was just a little Kodak Instamatic kit, and I had my spending money, and that took more than half of it. And my parents questioned, "Are you sure you want to?" You sure you want to do this? I went, yeah. <laughs> so, and I spent my whole day taking pictures and then getting my parents to buy me more film because, you know, I didn't comprehend that, you know, that, oh, well, there's only, two, why isn't it working anymore? We've got to change the film. <laughs> well, then you got to buy more film. So, and that's the other thing about film compared to digital too. I mean, with, with the digital technology, uh, you know, what, what's your, like I shoot with 64 gigabyte cards most of the time. Um, you can get 120, 100, you can get a terabyte now. I can do 2,000 photos on my cam before I have to, you know, so it's very easy to shotgun it or, yeah. you know, just take way too much. Where with film, um, you know, you had 36 or uh, was 24 or 24 or on the medium or format, 10 or 12, exactly. <laughs> so you really had to think it. There's that, uh, the movie, um, oh, what is it? Sky Captain and the Legend of Tomorrow with Gwyneth Paltrow is a photographer in that and she's got her camera and she's got one frame left and there's all these amazing things. It's like... Uh, do I want to do I want to use it now right so yeah um, and it, but that that was a thing in film like and again you couldn't just keep shooting until you had it you you you, you got a finite amount of things to do so it made you think it made you think it made you slow down sometimes <laughs> made you slow down yeah. and that's a so, major one yeah so. I'm gonna be asking every photographer who comes into this uh, conversation to choose three images for us to talk about why they did it or what was important or what it meant or you know something like that uh and when i asked john to do that he said it was really really hard very hard yeah so i'm gonna try and do it too but it's really hard uh so john chose nine images and i'm gonna go through them quickly so you can just see them and i said to john when i looked at them they are totally john this is totally what John does. Um, and this is where? That's Peggy's Cove in Nova Scotia. The iconic Peggy's Cove. <laughs> so That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And this? Uh, that, was a, that was a food shoot for a uh, friend turned client, uh, Karina Inkster, who's a vegan fitness instructor and coach. And I've done five books with her two of which are her, her vegan vegan athlete and vegan vitality um, so these were all uh, these were the the recipe shots for the cookbook nice. so and that's one of them and that's that's at location in her little apartment in uh, the west end or no sorry in uh, Kitsilano and? this is a uh, commercial shoot for a uh, furniture designer uh, named Sabina Hill, Sabina Hill Design, and um, she does amazing one-off their art pieces like she it's not mass produced if uh, if and so her stuff and her stuff is got many textures layers of glass metal salmon skin leather all kinds of stuff very technically tricky to shoot <laughs> so and uh those, those are, that, this is actually my friend Julio, um, and just want to do a creative session one day, and he came mm -hmm. by, and I said, hey, you busy? Can we, can we do some you stuff? Playing. I was playing, because I love right. to play, so. Uh, again, there's a, there's a friend that came down. Uh, I, I was down in Texas uh, uh, helping to teach at uh, the Texas School of Photography. And woman there that I met, her boyfriend was Canadian who now lives in the Yukon. <laughs> anyway, they were going to connect and see each other for the first time in 10 or 20 years. Oh, wow. So it's like, hey, yeah, you got a cool look. Let me, uh, I, I want to play. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's yeah. do some photos. 
Uh, this is Ganga Giri. He's, a, he's an Aussie didgeridoo, pumping percussive didgeridoo player that I met, oh, about 20 years ago. And uh, Amazing musician. Amazing Let's musician, yep. Find his, find his music. Yep, yep. And uh, this was at a um, Roots and Blues Festival up in Salmon Arm and uh, amazing it's, friendships and, and people that I've met and adventures I've had with, uh, with that whole family. So I love live performance stuff. I love live performance, um, especially music things. I just love the energy. Um, we, with Gonga, it was a lot of festivals rather than like, like, like um, one, one off show like concerts. Um, and that just I love that whole festival vibe of 72 hours of outside and music and community and, and amazing, amazingly talented people in all realms of creativity. I mean, it's, it's, I highly recommend that everyone go to one, um, at least one multi-day festival and stay for the entire thing um it's hard i mean it's hard it, if you're not used to it it's it's because it's non-stop it's literally 72 hours of non-stop stimulation and even when you want to go to sleep <laughs> it's on around you but it is amazing what what you see and the people that you meet and the creativity and, and in fashion and art in in paint uh, like in in all aspects of things it's it's truly amazing so yeah. that's and, great yeah. and and so do you find that this is something that inspires you and keeps oh, you going very much. and very much so um and uh, it 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 keeps you young because you're uh, you're around you're around that energy and uh, you know again a lot of the festival goers and things like that they, i mean they're younger but yeah. it, it goes from literally people bring their babies and yes people nowadays you see it's one of the cutest things is to see little babies with giant head <laughs> noise canceling headphones on so they protect their hearing and things yeah. but right up to 80 and i think the oldest person i ever met at a festival was 91 oh wow and that's awesome. You you would not know. Yeah. <laughs> you would not know. I mean, yes, it's that artistic. an elder, but yeah, but, but full of life. Yeah. You know, just amazing. So yeah, keeps me going for sure. Uh, let's talk about this one now. This okay. was one of the ones that you really um, chose. So what is this image all about? Uh, this image is all about. I was going through a bit of a time when, um, again, being a commercial photographer. A lot of times it's not the most exciting stuff. <laughs> I wasn't kidding when I was talking about, you know, shooting pots and pans and things like that. Cause yeah. I mean, that, that's part of it. It's catalog, e-commerce, uh, you know, a lot of stuff is, is, uh, is, um, mundane at best. So yeah. I really wanted to do something that was really full on creative. That's just for me. This, this image incorporates a couple of different things. Like the background image of Stonehenge I shot when we went uh, on a trip in 2016 um, and then the shot of the, of the our model here uh, my friend Keely uh, we I shot that in the studio and then uh, got into the uh, the compositing which I've done a lot of in in my photography for commercial things a lot of times it's stripping in windows and interiors or movie screens or you know and things like that but uh, not I've never sort of done it um, in something like this cutting out fur yeah that's that's a whole new skill set that i had to learn that was driving me up the wall um so it was and again it was it was full-on just a creative endeavor um uh, my wife my lovely wife chrissy who you know quite well uh she made this whole outfit um and it was just it was fun and that's what keeps us going because it's the fun stuff, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. photographing plates. That's, it's, it's, that's the work part. Things like this is. So do you find when you do uh, images for yourself like this, mm -hmm. that when you go back to the other work, you're, you're re reinvigorated again? Yes, definitely. Because he, it, it, it gets things again again when you get don't going in things that are sort of the, the mundane it gets a bit mechanical yeah. and uh but it's still the same skill sets you still have to do lighting you still have to you know the camera angle is important um you know and things like, that, like some of it is a little more um 
um, rigid, like when you're doing uh, uh, like stuff that's for somebody's catalog or of their product and things. I, I mean, it has to be the color that it is. Yeah. You know, it has to it has to look like it does. Huh. Um, so it can get a little mechanical because once you sort of get things set, it it um, it gets repetitive and things like that. But when you go out and do something like this, you come back and yes, it's you're still lighting a water bottle or a yeah. thermos, yeah. but it's all new because. Um, it's 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 yeah it's lighting it's yeah. photography you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. and I think that's one of the things that I really love in the direction I went um, is I love the lighting aspect of it like I love the lighting yeah. I love figuring that out yeah. and making it look I mean I've had I've had a couple of times where people say oh don't you love they have a light and it's like yeah I, I do but I lit this totally this is inside a dark room and they're like wow it looks like it's outside or you know whatever it is and I love that yeah. so. Yeah. So this Hence, incorporated. Hence, image so. maker. Hence, image maker. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. All right, let's talk about the next one. Oh, Nori. Um, again, this was a, a fellow that I met through a, a, through a common friend, and we were just chatting, and, I mean, he's a beautiful man. <laughs> I mean, personality, his energy, his look, uh, he, and uh, he's a super talented musician, uh, actor, you know, again, creative person, very spiritual, et cetera. I said, hey, we, I'd love to... We be interested in doing some photos sometime and he's like well yes i'd love to do that so he came to the studio and and we uh we wanted to play and so we spent i don't know i said an hour and i think we were three <laughs> so which often happens when you're playing as you know a hundred percent yeah mm -hmm. and and with this and i love this photo because um like when you look at his face, uh, like you know, like, like one of the things, especially when I'm shooting musicians, I always say, just just play, yeah. like just play. Don't, you're not posing for a camera. You're not. We're yeah. not doing. Uh, well, I mean, again, if it's if it's the photo they need for a poster because they're getting work or whatever, but for for um, the photo of the musician, it's like just play. And his his like you can see his love of music and his yes. soul in this photo. And there's nothing. <laughs> Staged. I mean, yes, we lit it. We had the thing, and then I, j I just let him play, and and I captured that moment. But uh, so it is kind of taking a picture of what I see, but it's building the look of of the scene, and you know, and yeah. and making that enhance or you know that it that it complements his uh, you know his his emotion and his feeling and I, this is one of my favorite pictures i've done in a long time and it's largely because of how deep he is into it yeah so. the, the expressions it, it's amazing you can you can feel him yeah playing and you can feel that he's feeling the yeah. music yeah yeah, yeah. definitely it's, it's so. incredible so this section mm -hmm. um is just a few questions, but they're rapid fire. Okay, ready. What would be one piece of advice that you give to other photographers? Don't get lost in gear. What's your favorite snack food? Pretzels. <laughs> favorite lens? 100 millimeter macro. Natural light or strobes? Combination, strobe. Favorite thing to photograph? Oh God! One, Quick. one, one thing. Um, I don't. Um, live music. Handheld or tripod? Tripod. <laughs> Film or digital? Digital. Uh, favorite location you've ever worked in? Oh my God! Um, um, I don't know. Uh, uh, Australia. When you're working in the studio, music or no music? Yes. Uh, <laughs> no. No music. It depends because it depends. If there's other people around, then generally have some music. But if I'm not working myself, a lot of times I don't have music. Do you meditate? Yes. Social media: Facebook, Instagram, X, Reddit, Substack, Discord. What do you like? None of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Necessary evil. That's, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji. I currently use Canon. And uh, your favorite piece of software? Photoshop. And what phone do you have? iPhone 12 mini. <laughs> awesome. Don't get lost in the gear. <laughs>
All right, so this is the section where I, the photographer, are going to take a portrait of the photographer. Uh, and I chose to use natural light for John because it's a beautiful day today. And uh, I'm using my 85 and it's a 1.4, which is awesome, but it only manually focuses on this camera. So I, it takes me a while. Like the old days. <laughs> it's the old days. You actually have to turn the thing yourself. Um, and I love this lens. It's my favorite lens. Um, and so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do some portraits. All right. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to sort of fast forward on this section. Okay. Chin down. Yeah. Down a little more. I'm just going to change my. One point six. Love it. Right there. I totally blinked. <laughs> <laughs> Are you breathing? I'm breathing. Good. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, come on over in here. <clears throat> I so, still have to understand the quality of the light. Yes, it's so nice and soft. And, and turn your head even more. Yeah, look that way. That's great. Nice. And your eyes towards me. Yeah. Nice. And then just keep looking out there. That's great. Sorry. Oh, sorry. You're allowed to move. <laughs> And then come away from the wall. So come right over here. And a little closer to the, yeah. And looking out the window again for one. Uh, maybe looking at like, yeah, cheating that way. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Hang up, I'm just gonna fix that. Had to curl there. And tilt your head away from me just a little. Yeah, great. And turn your chin just a little towards me. Yeah, great. And your eyes a little towards me as well. Yeah. And right into the lens. Yeah. And tilt your head just a little and chin down just a little. Awesome. You're allowed to smile too. <laughs> Mother would be happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Focusing, it's so strange. <laughs> and then turn your hard, your head hard that way. Yeah, nice. That's great. Best beard to photograph. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go. So that's it for our conversation with John Watson. In the link below, I am going to put his website and his social media because he uses it so much. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be better now. I'll have to do more. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you liked this, don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. And as always, remember to breathe. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs>